Okay, we can probably go ahead and get started. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight to talk about North Hills Online Academy. My name is Beth Williams, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the Assistant Superintendent for the District. And also joining me this evening is Mrs. Joe Brooks, who is the K through 12 Online Coordinator. So tonight is designed to provide you with an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have regarding our online program. But before we begin, I wanted to review a few of the questions that we have been receiving um, an awful lot of questions about. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things. Please excuse me for a moment if I'm looking away from the screen. I did take notes to make sure that I hit all the salient points to provide you with the correct information. First and foremost, just a clarification between what choice parents have with regard to going back to school here in the fall. Please note, the district will choose which operational plan we're in, whether that is a traditional, blended, hybrid, or virtual plan. And that will be based on information provided to us from the governor of Pennsylvania, as well as Allegheny County um, Network, Health Network, as well as the CDC. You as a parent then have the right to choose to attend any of those plans or to make the choice to enroll into North Hills Online Academy. So I just wanted to clarify that because I think there was some confusion with parents thinking that they could pick hybrid or they could pick blended. Those plans will be selected by the school district. Your choice is whether to follow one of those plans or to enroll in the Online Academy. Secondly, what I wanted to mention is that our Online Academy is a program available to all students in grade K through 12. And students have the option of attending the Online Academy for every single one of their courses, or if there are courses that require them or they wish to go to school for, they can go to school for some of those courses as well. For example, if at the elementary level, it's very important for both you and your child for she or he to attend art or music, or PE and you wanted them to attend school that day for just those courses and take all their core courses online, we can facilitate that schedule. However, transportation becomes the parent's responsibility as we do not do midday bus runs based upon when those specials will occur. So we can allow students to take some courses online and they can report to school in person for those courses as well. Our curriculum, whether it is face-to-face -face or whether it is virtual, aligns to the standards of Pennsylvania Department of Education. There are differences between the face-to-face -face curriculum that we teach with regard to what is available on Accelerate Educate. And the only difference is the curriculum, meaning the types of worksheets, maybe the types of stories that we read, those may look different. But what we are teaching your children every single day are the standards. That's what they are measured on, on standardized testing. That's what we teach them and hope for them to learn and acquire those skills. So regardless of whether the story face-to-face -face looks a little bit different than the story that they would read on Accelerate Educate, the standards are the same. So it is easy if you choose to, at the end of a nine-week period, and you wish to then transition out of the online academy back into a more face-to-face um, program at the school, we can facilitate that because again, what we are teaching students are the standards and all of our curriculum is aligned to that. The other question that we receive a lot of interest in is if a student has an IEP or a GIEP, are we able to accommodate those adaptations or needs for those students? We can. What we would do is we would review what those specific adaptations or accommodations are, and we would determine what of those are appropriate or need to move forward in an online program. For instance, if your son or daughter has preferential seating in a face-to-face -face classroom, that probably would not be something that you would be concerned about, obviously, in the online academy. However, if we need to reopen an IEP or a GIP to look at additional addendums, supports, adaptations, we can call another IEP or GIP meeting to make sure that we are adding those appropriate supports or enrichments, whatever it would mean, need to be for your son or daughter. Also, all students grades K through 12, regardless of whether they're in person and they're going back to school or they're enrolled in the online academy, will receive an iPad 
and students can complete the work in North Hills Online Academy. They can complete that work via the iPad. We also did last week, Mrs. Brooks and I did an overview of the courses to basically show you the online academy, the structure of the courses to see that that format or that structure is very, very similar in grades K through 12 and give you some examples of some of the sample lessons. So if you've not had an opportunity to check that video out, I encourage you to do so so you can get an overview of what the Accelerate Educate program looks like with North Hills Online Academy. The biggest question that we continue to receive continues to be about the level of teacher interaction. Most online programs that are out there rely on asynchronous learning, meaning that the lessons are pre-recorded and any type of instruction is embedded in that specific lesson. So if you look at the overview for the online academy courses through Accelerate Educate, that's exactly what you'll see. You'll see embedded recordings or videos within that lesson for the teaching. Students in grades seven through 12 will definitely, for any course we have offered at this time, have a North Hills school teacher helping to facilitate that course. We are continuing to discuss what it's going to look like in grades K through six with elementary. And the reason that we're still in discussion with that is, in the past, we really have never had many more than three students go online at elementary. So in order for us to do that, we need to have some discussions behind the scenes to make sure that we're able to determine what the best course of action is with regard to this. So I apologize. I know many of you want that answer and I'm sorry I can't be more definitive. What I can be definitive on is that those conversations are transpiring and winding up here very shortly and we hope to have more information to you very soon. And once we do have that information, Mrs. Brooks and I will certainly do another video or certainly do another presentation so you can see very specifically exactly what that interactive piece is going to look like. If you are a parent of a high school student and you have concerns with regard to honors level classes or AP classes, those are scheduling concerns that I am not best equipped to answer, nor is Mrs. Brooks. Actually, Mr. John Lesjack, who's the assistant principal of the high school, is the best person to contact, or Mr. McKiernan, the building principal. Both of those email addresses can be found on the district webpage under the high school, but if you reach out to them, they can answer any specific questions that you have. With regard to CHS courses, college and high school courses at the high school, we can't make any of those decisions. Those are literally university um, taught or mandated courses. We have to follow the lead of the university as to how they're gonna offer those courses. As that information unfolds, if there would be a change with regard to those, we would certainly let you know that as well. Enrollment in the North Hills Online Academy requires you to complete an online enrollment form, which can be found on the webpage under the Online Academy. So please make sure if you wish to enroll that you do so. You will receive an email confirmation indicating that you have been enrolled, you've enrolled your child. So again, if you think you've enrolled but you have not received that email confirmation, then you might wanna double check to make sure you filled out the correct form. You literally have to fill out the enrollment form to be enrolled in the online academy. Mrs. Williams, just let me interrupt you for a minute. That's that enrollment form that went out last week in that email blast that the district sent in that newsletter. Thank you. Um, I know some of you are questioning why are we asking you to enroll by August 10th because obviously this is a very fluid situation with what's going on in the world and in Allegheny County. And I know that for some of you has been a, a distinct question. There are a lot of logistical steps that we need to take behind the scenes to ensure that your son and daughter is enrolled in every single course that they need to be enrolled in and that they are accessible and ready to go on day one. So if it is at all possible, we are respectfully requesting that you enroll as soon as possible. Certainly understanding that things are changing very rapidly. Um, and some of you may need a little bit more time and a little bit more information uh, to make a final decision. So we understand that, but from our end, we really want the students to be enrolled and ready to go day one, if at all possible. So if you do choose to enroll, much closer to the first day of school, please know if we got a lot of people enrolling in a couple of days beforehand, we might not be able to, to fulfill all of those enrollment requests 
in a 24 hour period. It might take us a day and a half to do that. And that's okay if it does. The flexibility that online courses provide you will allow us to adjust the calendar and do what we need to do. But again, from a scheduling standpoint and a logistics standpoint, the sooner you can enroll, the easier it is for us to get everything set up for your student. If you wish to transition out of the North Hills Online Academy, we are respectfully requesting that you wait until the end of a nine week period. For the same reasons, it's difficult for us to go ahead and transition people, students back. We wanna get the correct schedule and make sure everything is lined up and ready to go for them. And then another question that we've been answering a lot is the transitioning back. So let's say you enroll your son or daughter for the first nine weeks. At the end of that nine weeks, you'd like to re-enroll them back into whatever the district plan is, whether that is face-to-face, -face, a hybrid, a blended opportunity, you are definitely sending them back into a school building under whatever the district plan is. There's been questions or concerns regarding the class size. Are we gonna be able to, or be equipped to handle the class size? Is this gonna make class size policies grow? How are we handling that? We are working incredibly closely with every building principal to look at who is enrolling, what grade level, class lists, and such to ensure um, that we are being very mindful of that. We are definitely committed as a district to maintaining to the very most extent possible our class size policy. So certainly that is something that we are working on. I don't want you to think that you're gonna roll back in and your child's gonna be in a class size with 35 other students. We, we would never do that. And that is something that we are working on behind the scenes as well. That's why that enrollment information is really, really critical for us to have as soon as possible so we can make the best decisions. Last but not least, during this chat, I will be answering as many questions as possible live. And if I need to ask for additional help, I'll be relying on Mrs. Brooks to answer questions. But she is also going to be available in case you have a question and you wanna use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. You can certainly type your question in and Mrs. Brooks will be monitoring that as well. So if you wanna ask a question in the Q&A box, please feel free to do so. We'll be more than happy to do that. Please refrain, if at all possible, from using the chat just because it becomes confusing for Mrs. Brooks to toggle back and forth. So if you have any questions that you would like her to answer behind the scenes, please use the Q&A feature and she will certainly ask those questions as well. Last but not least, I promise, and then I'll let you ask questions. Um, we have updated our FAQs. There's updated questions that are out there online today. So we, we took some questions from over the past couple of days, as well as some questions from today's earlier question and answer session. And we have added those. So I encourage you to check those out. Also, this morning's Q&A session, we did record and we are recording this one as well. So certainly there may be some questions that were asked this morning that may not be covered in this session. So if you'd like to watch that as well, I encourage you to do that. Our goal is to provide you with as much transparent, accurate information that we possibly can. Knowing that right now, there's a couple more pieces that we need to fall into place before I can release some other information to you, okay? So at that point in time, that's all the information I have. Mrs. Brooks, do you have anything else to add? Nope, aren't you? We're doing okay. Okay, fantastic. So I think at this point in time, we are ready to start taking parent questions. So anybody that has a question, use the raise hand feature and we'll bring you up to talk. So we have Christina Smith first, so let me. Are you there, Christina? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Ms. Smith, how are you? Good, Mrs. Williams, how are you? I'm delightful, what can I answer for you? Excellent, so I had a question about the, um, you stated that in the seven to 12 um, grade range, mm -hmm. that the teachers at the building were involved in, um, in teaching, would that be more like uh, live classes or, or how are the teachers involved? <laughs> In the past, Mrs. Smith, great question. It has not been live because the programs that we have used in the past, again, almost all the instruction is embedded within that lesson, whether it's been a video, whether it's been guided practice, whether it's been an independent practice, but those teachers are available to check in with the students enrolled in that class to say, hey, how's it going? What, are there any questions? Do you need me to help facilitate anything? Is there something that you're struggling with? So for instance, if I was enrolled in the class and it was a math class, Mrs. Williams would definitely be reaching out to her math teacher saying, hey, I need a little bit more help with this. Can you please help me? They would then reach out and they would provide instruction with regard to that. 
Now, having said that, we are continuing to review what we're doing with the online program in general to determine what that level of interactivity is. And that's the information, whether it's seven through 12 and K through six, that we are continuing to work on to see if we can provide additional updates and additional information for that. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, Mrs. Williams, yes. uh, question about the transportation. If the student is going into the online academy, do they need to opt out of the transportation? If they are going into the online academy and they are going to enroll in that and they are not using the bus for any reason, then yes, they can go ahead and opt out. And if there is a place in there to put the reason, I would definitely put, if there's an area or a comment that you could please put, enrolled in the online academy. And Mrs. Brooks, we also need to coordinate our spreadsheet of enrollees with transportation as well. Okay. Okay. Did that answer your question, Mrs. Smith? I'm so sorry. No, that's fine, and it did. Thank you very much. I did have one other question, if you don't mind. No, absolutely. Okay, thank you. So in regards to um, IEP modifications and accommodations, yes. um, so let's say that you have a, a student in high school that maybe has an accommodation that's uh, difficult to kind of like embed into a program in my mind. Uh, let's say it wasn't um, like a no points like off for spelling time. or something. Okay, so it's not like extended time. It's not like some right. like something a little bit more unique. Okay. Yeah, is that something you can like tweak with the system to make those accommodations happen? Some things we can tweak within the system. Extended time is certainly something that we can do very very quickly. We can um, limit choices. I know sometimes we provide the accommodation of limited choices on different things. I know sometimes we look at assistance with um, open-ended questions and things such as that. Those right. are certainly things that we would need to discuss. Our guidelines would be your child's IEP. And then we would go through that, work with the teacher to determine what we can do and what we cannot do. And then if there were any questions or concerns, again, the beauty of an IEP or a GIEP is we would need to take a step back and open that up and have a quick conversation, whether via phone or in person with the IEP team or the GIEP team and say, hey, well, we've got to figure out a different way to support this child's needs. And I'm sure... Again, um, you know Dr. Bazilla, she is phenomenal at coming up with different ways that we can go ahead and do that. But we are, our goal is to accommodate everything that we possibly can accommodate. And we are definitely willing to get as creative as we need to be to support us. Okay, thank you so much. Those are all my questions, I appreciate it. Thank you, have a great night. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, next up, um, let's see, Chrissy's. Zmuda. I'm sorry if I messed up your last name. Are you there? I think you're muted on your side. Chrissy Zmuda. We can come back to her. All right, let's go to Lara. I think she just unmuted, I think she just unmuted Mrs. Pallet. I think I, I lowered her or oh. I... So yeah, so let's, we'll, we'll give her a second. We'll go to Lara Finucan. Are you I'm there? Sorry. Are you there? Hello? Hi, Ms. Can you hear, can yes. you hear me? We can, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What can I answer for you? Um, so I have a few really quick questions. Sure. So, I wanted to wait until August 6th to see what the school district is doing. Mm -hmm. um, is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Our enrollment date, I think what we're kind of pushing out there is we're hoping to have everyone enrolled by August 10th. That gives us a lot of time. The reality of that is the world is changing very, very quickly. And I understand parents might need a little bit more time. So yes, if you want to wait until after you see what happens at the board meeting and the district decides on August 6th, that is absolutely acceptable and that is not a problem at all. Now I have a question. If the school district goes fully online. Yes ma'am. Um, then I wouldn't have to do the online academy because it's already online. Correct. If we start the year as, let me, let me make sure I explain this correctly. If, you and, if your child is enrolled in the online academy and we begin the first day of school, the expectation is that your child remains in the online academy for the first nine weeks. 
if up until the first day of school, let's say the district announces, I believe our first day of school is August 25th, let's say for whatever reason we come back on August 24th, you, the, we announce, look, we're going in red, we are definitely going virtual for the entire district, then it would be what we had the last nine weeks of school in the sense that we are teaching, teaching their individual classes and they would be utilizing Google. Now, having said that, we're also looking at parameters and things that we can do to talk about the instruction that, trans that took place the last nine weeks. I cannot say enough about our teachers. Our teachers did an amazing job within 72 hours of going online when we were all kind of learning together what we were doing. We also know, based upon the teacher feedback, parent feedback, and student feedback, it's really important that we continue to have that connection that ability for students to interact with teachers and things as such. So if the entire district goes red, while we will use Google Classroom, it's going to look a little bit different this year because we're talking about those pieces as well, okay? Okay, my last question is, um, my, my son, if, if I would have to do the online academy, mm -hmm. um, because I don't think he could wear a mask all day long, okay. um, he could come into school for math and reading. Absolutely. Absolutely, he could. The biggest issue with that, Mrs. Finugan, is going to be the transportation piece. So you would that'll, need that, that'll be fine with us. We could we would work it out. Perfect. And you would just need to then talk to. I'm not sure what school your son would um, be attending, but you would then need to talk to that building principal to determine when the ELA course, the reading course, would be, and when the math course would be. So you would know what the transportation time would be. But we certainly could could accommodate that very easily. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I just, I'm, I'm trying to hold off till the sixth. I, I wish they would tell us earlier. <laughs> I know. I know. Like I said, we, we are desperately moving forward in a very fluid time and trying to make sure that we have all the information that we possibly need to make the best possible decisions. So we're, we're aware and we are so appreciative truly of all of our parents, our teachers, everyone's support and patience as we all work together through you know, what is a very, you know, challenging and ever-changing time. So thank you for your patience. And, and I promise as soon as we get some answers, we will be more than happy to share them with all of you. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's okay and that I wait until I find out what the school's doing. Absolutely. Not a problem at all. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. Okay. Let's try, um, we'll try Chrissy Samuda again. Are you there? Okay, she doesn't appear to be there yet. So let's go on to the next. Um, <clears throat> Darlene Waddingham. Hello, are you there? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, I'm having a good evening. Thank you for doing this. Oh, you're completely welcome. Like I said, the more information we can give you, we're, our hope is the more comfortable you feel making the, the best choice. For okay. Your Thank you. I, I, I will admit I have not done all my homework yet. That's I okay. was not prepared for this, so I might be asking something redundant. That's okay. Um, from what I could see, it looks like just your basic courses are offered. I have a second grader and a seventh grader. So it's math, reading, like your basics. Yeah. No art, music, gym. In the elementary, we are definitely the focus is on the core content classes because realistically, even if a student comes to school traditionally in a face to face, if it was a regular school day before COVID, um, students in elementary, particularly in the primary, spend upwards of about 90 minutes to 120 minutes doing ELA and probably about 90 minutes a day doing math. So that is where the focus is or on those courses. But again, as I said, if those other courses, the specials at elementary are important to you and you want to use that as an opportunity for your child to get to know some classmates and still be involved in the school, you are more than welcome to, we can make those arrangements with your building principal for them to do the core classes online and come in for the, the specials if that's what works best for you. Okay. Um, same for your seventh grader. There are more courses offered, obviously, at the middle school. There are more options uh, available, but certainly it's not as extensive as what the course catalog is or the program of studies is for the face-to-face -face school class Absolutely. at the middle school, okay? 
but their education still considered complete absolutely without having yes ma'am absolutely okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right thank you so much you're welcome have a great night oh, hold too. on mrs williams wait a second here i have a question for you but i have to find it um hold on that's okay Oh, just go, go ahead. I can't find it now. Okay. We can bring up Christina Smith. Looks like has another question. So let me bring her up. Are you there? Hi, I'm sorry. No, you're <laughs> fine. No um, you were talking with the last um, person about like course offerings and how some of them aren't offered online. And I'll be honest, I haven't looked at all the high school ones yet, which are what affects my children. Sure. And I'm wondering, um, if there isn't, and I'm just assuming like things like electives um, that meet the re graduation requirement for, you know, maybe it's PE or um, I'm, I, I don't exactly know what I'm, I mean, but if there are sure, for requirements the, for graduation, how will that work? Yes, high school students look a little bit different because you are appearing credits, right, to meet the graduation requirements. Right. So Mr. Van Kiernan was very, very careful in looking at the program of studies and what courses we needed to be offering online to ensure that we were meeting those needs. So students could meet the graduation requirements, whether it's the math, science, social studies, and English components, whether it is the elective components, whether it's STEM components, those are very much a part of that. But if okay. you have any questions and you still have any concerns about that, hey, can someone else take a double check? I just want to make sure that my child is still on the path to reaching those requirements please feel free to reach out again. The, the counselors would be great to answer that. They will be reporting back to work here very, very shortly. But in the interim, you can certainly reach out to Mr. McKiernan, uh, Mr. Lesjack, or Ms. Minsmore, depending on who your um, son or daughter's principal is. And they can quickly run through that once you enroll for the online academy. We would never okay. put a student in jeopardy of not being able to accrue enough credits. We are very, very mindful about that. And I know we're reviewing every student who is enrolling online to double check that. But feel okay. free to do that. That makes you feel better. Thank you so much. Mrs. Brooks, do you want to, oh, I'm sorry, we have one more question. Then after that, if you want to start reading some questions, that would be great. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm in the middle of answering. Sure. We can bring up Emily Miller. Emily. Hi, Ms. Miller. Hi, yes. Um, our, our daughter is starting kindergarten this year, and I was wondering if we do enroll her in the online academy, uh, does she actually get assigned a teacher in the North Hill School District, or is it a, an online academy teacher? Or is that one in the same? And that's part of the conversations that we're having right now. As I said before, okay. we have never really had the, the largest amount of elementary students we've ever had, at least since I've been in district in the online academy, has been three or less. So we've always used a teacher from the prior that we use. So for instance, if we went by that formula for this year, we would be looking at a certified teacher from Accelerate Educate. They are certified teachers, certified elementary teachers. We get their credentials and things as such. We are currently looking at seeing, with regard to the schedule and what that would look like, if we can add North Hills teachers to teaching our elementary classes. We've had that seven through 12 historically because that's where the predominant number of students in our online academy have been from. Those are those conversations we are dealing with right now, Ms. Miller. So I would love okay. to give you a definitive answer. Just please sure. continue to be patient with us. We should have answers very, very soon for that. And then, and then just one follow-up question. If, sure. if whether it's a North Hills um, school district teacher or the online academy teacher, yeah, is there any actual like live interaction with the students and the teacher or is it all recording? A good portion of it is recorded, but that is up to each individual teacher. I would not presume to speak for anyone from Accelerate Educate as to how much time that they would interact with regard to that. And again, those are ongoing conversations we're having right now with all of our North Hills teachers, K through 12, to just kind of take a look at this and, and, and see what students need. But I will tell you, the lessons are designed, as you just said, where a lot of it is recorded and in-house. We also realize and recognize the importance of having that connection and that opportunity to interact with the teacher, whether that is quote unquote live teaching or teachers checking in and doing things. 
we recognize that those are some of the things that we're trying to iron out and get you guys a very clear, definitive answer as to what that's going to look like. So I promise it's coming. I know I'm making you all um, impatient with that, um, but it is coming. When I roll that information or present that information out, I just want to be 100% accurate and transparent. So I don't have an answer for that yet. Okay, I, thought, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Miller. Have a great night. I found my question. Okay. Can you please explain again the difference between the regular virtual schooling and online academy? The regular virtual schooling would be exactly or very similar to what we did the last nine weeks, where every single North Hills teacher would have a Google Classroom, and in that Google Classroom, they would use that to provide instruction. The online, North Hills Online Academy, is what we showcased last week in a video, which are very structured courses with videos and things as such embedded in them. So I'm, that's the quickest and probably cleanest and neatest way that I can explain that. Certainly whoever has that question, if they would like to call me and speak to me specifically about that, please do not hesitate to do so tomorrow and we can speak more candidly about that. Okay, okay. Here, here's another question. I have a family that is new to the district Okay. And they need to know how to get on the list to receive all the communications. To get on the list to receive the e-links? Yes. If you go to the district website, there is a section on there, I believe, under communication and allows you to sign up for e-links. Mrs. Pellet, you're probably better equipped to answer that than I am. But any information regarding the online academy, that is on the website. So if you literally go to the district website, and you look up, there is a search bar at the top, and you look up North Hills Online Academy, all of this information will pop up to you. It is also on the main page right now. It's one of the main icons on there about interested in the Online Academy or need more information, you can click there, and that is listed right there for you. The quickest way to get to the e-link sign up though, Dr. Williams, is probably just either searching e-link, so E-L-I-N-K in the search bar on the website, nhsc.net, or under the parents tab, there's a connect with us option. And if they click that from there, you'll find the e-link sign up. And then Perfect. just remember to confirm the email address once you get the email saying that you signed up. Okay. Do we have another question, Mrs. Pellet? We do. We're going to, Chrissy Zmuda. Let's see. Chrissy, are you there? Hello. Can you hear me now? I can. Hi, yes. Hi Mrs. Zmuda. How are you? Hi, right, good. How are you? I'm so sorry. I was having technical difficulties. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for sticking around. I'll be more than happy to answer whatever you need me to answer. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, my question has to do with um, the honors classes. So um, from what I understand, next year there aren't right now um, any honors or AP classes available um, through the online academy, and there's, and, but there's enrichment activities that are done. And are those enrichment activities, like, could they be equivalent to taking the honors courses? Yes. And that be reflected in the GPA at all? Yes, okay. ma'am. So that's why if you have any questions about honors or AP, we're asking you specifically to reach out to the high school because okay. they're better equipped to speak to that. But the honors courses, yes, but the enrichment activities are embedded in that. The assessments and the assignments are much more rigorous which coincide more such with what an honors type level course could look like. So we are very comfortable at that point, if someone is an honors level, if we say, yep, they want the honors level, okay, we're gonna give them all the enrichment assessments and assignments and this is what it's gonna look like. We are very comfortable looking at that and going ahead and looking at the honors course weight and things as such. AP at this point in time, at this point in time, we do not have any AP courses running but I ask you to please make contact with Mr. McKiernan or Mr. Lesjack via email and let them know that your son or daughter has an AP course because basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to kind of get a sign up to see what the interest is. And if there's enough students enrolled in an AP course and we can get an AP course, we will attempt to get an AP course online as well, okay? So it's really important to reach out to the high school. Okay, thank you so much. Can I ask another question? Sure, well? absolutely. Okay, so um, I know they work independently, so um, could they work ahead and how far can they work ahead? Like how far in advance are assignments put out? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's 
um, you know, they might want to work ahead a few days in advance or maybe a week ahead if they can. Yeah, that's the beauty of online. There is that flexibility with regard to that. The way the system is set up right now in the program is you can continue to move ahead as long as you've completed all the assignments within that module, within that unit. What gets you into trouble when you can't move ahead is if you're trying to skip around and not choose different assignments. But as long as that is something that's amenable with the teacher, absolutely. There may be a day, let's say you have a really, really big math test coming up and you don't have time to work on some other courses and you really wanna focus on math and maybe you're only gonna do your English and you might not work on your other courses. Can they do that? Absolutely. Now, what we like to see is we like to tell kids to be really organized, to log into every single class every single day, and structure it exactly as if you're going to school face-to-face. -face. We also recognize and realize some students can make those adjustments and say, hey, I'm not going to, I'm going to do all my math work in one day for the entire week, and, that, and that's going to work for me, and that's okay. So we recognize that, and the teachers can allow that flexibility, and they do so now. So that is not a problem at all. Okay. Can I also ask one more? It just occurred to me right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so let's say um, that we en I enroll my student um, for online for the first nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And for the second nine weeks, the um, school district has gone all online. So are we able to go back to the online that would be with the district? versus the online academy do you know am i asking that correctly i don't know if you're, I know what you're asking and that's a great question i believe at this point in time we basically said once you're in the online academy would like you to stay in the online academy unless it's at a nine-week break that's a great question that's a unique question that i think is the first time that question's been asked so i just want to make sure i really think about that and talk that over and think about what that would look like and is that the best way to keep that continuity of education for the student and for the teachers. Is that the best thing to say at the end of the nine weeks? Okay, we're done with Accelerate Educate, quote unquote, courses. Now I'm gonna pop you back into the virtual online with the face to, with our teachers. I don't know what the answer to that is, so I'm gonna actually have to think about that. And then Mrs. Muda, I will put that out on the FAQs. I'm actually writing that question down as we speak. And then I will get more information on that for you. But as of right now, it's pretty much designed, if we go red, you stay in the online academy. Um, once you enroll in it, even if the district goes red, you, you stick with that so you're not toggling back and forth between programs. But let me just double check to make sure I'm correct on that, okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome, have a great night. You too. Okay, let's go to the next question and I'm gonna apologize in advance for this name because I don't think I'm gonna pronounce it correctly, but. Dunalaskami Devardan. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Um, thank you for doing this. So I wanted to check, like, once my students are taking the online courses and when they get a doubt and uh, if they wanted to reach to their particular teacher, who's a, whoever has been assigned in the elementary, elementary graders, how soon they'll be getting the response and reply and how can they get connected with the teachers for the doubts? I think they will be connected very, very quickly, regardless of whether it's an Accelerate Educate teacher or regardless of whether it's a North Hills teacher. You know, our goal is to have them make those connections in that very day that that question or that communication is posted to them. Um, our teachers did a phenomenal job with that the last nine weeks of school when we were virtual. They were very responsive, very quick to respond. So I would like to say that I'm very, very confident that the same day your son or daughter would reach out to their teacher, they would receive some type of response. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Have a great night. Good. Thank you. Okay, um, Marlene Ozel. Are you there? Ozel. Can you hear me? We can. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks so much. Okay, so I have kind of one question that I want to piggyback off of the one that was about the two virtual questions, uh, switching from the virtual academy from like what we had in the spring. So in the spring, my son had supplemental reading, um, and he's a struggling reader. And so how, 
And unfortunately, we're just not comfortable, even with all the amazing steps. I know you guys have a million plans, but as a family, we've decided not to go into the building. Okay. How is this educational mean, needs going to be met on the online academy? Because um, I'm not a teacher, and I definitely don't want him to fall behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I would suggest you do, first and foremost, is we would ask you to communicate with the teacher. I'm not sure whether your son has an IEP. Or he does not, not know. Okay. But, that, but that's okay. That's information you're still going to want to share with the teacher. The nice part about the online academy courses is there is uh, built-in features in that system where if he is a struggling reader, it can be read aloud to him. So even if he sits down and he tries to read it and he's not sure if he's reading it correctly, you literally, there is a toolbar right above, you hit the button and any text that is on that page will be read to him. So there are those types of accommodations that are built into the system. Also, the teacher will certainly work with them, whether it's an Accelerate Educate teacher or whether it's a North Hills teacher. Our goal is to educate students and whether it's face-to-face -face or whether it's online, students learn at different rates and students need different types of supports um, throughout their time in the school system. And that is what our job is, to figure out what those need to look like and what that can possibly be. So that's an easy conversation with whoever your son or daughter's teacher is going to be saying, hey, here are my concerns. This is what I'm worried about. I really don't want them to fall behind. The other nice part about it is there is a course calendar that will kind of help, particularly at the elementary end, to keep your son or daughter very, very organized. Because once they're enrolled, it shows exactly what is supposed to be done every single day. And that's to really help the student recognize and realize, hey, look, this is manageable. We can do this. This is not so overwhelming. So we're able to kind of, you know, do a little bit every single day. And we're able to get through that. But certainly, that won't be a problem. I, I, I know that's a concern for you, but I can assure you, if you reach out to a teacher again, whether it's an Accelerate Educate teacher or a North Hills teacher, they will work with you and your child to, to do their best to meet his or her needs. Okay, and then I just have one other quick question, if it's okay. Sure. Um, so I know with on the elementary side, you're still figuring out with the teachers what it's going to be, Accelerate and or someone within our district. Does that mean that the district, if you had some North Hills district teachers on the elementary side, they would be crafting the material. I, I don't really know what that means when you say we're trying to get some on. No, it would just mean they would help facilitate those lessons. Our North Hills Online Academy curriculum is the curriculum we use Accelerate Educate curriculum. That it is a program written specifically, their courses are written specifically for online teaching and learning. We have used a provider for many, many years in this district. Our last provider no longer is in business, hence the reason we had to change to Accelerate Educate. So they would be using that curriculum. It just means that if we use a North Hills teacher, they will be there. That will be the person that you will be communicating with. They will be the one contacting you. They will be the one reaching out to your child and answering those questions and having those interactions once we deem what those interactions are. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, I just didn't know what that meant. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. That's why we're here tonight, so you can ask any questions you need to. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mrs. Brooks, I think you have a question for yes, me. Yes, I have a couple for you. Okay. Um, one of the questions is in regards to gate. How will the gate activities be handled? Do they need to come into the school? Will they be Zooming with their gate teacher? I think that's a personal preference for the parents. Any academic needs that a student has through their GIEP, can be met by the enrichment portion of the courses of in the North Hills Online Academy. So if they have a specific enrichment need in math, we can use the enrichment activities and assessments and assignments in that math course to meet that GIP need. If what is important is the pullout time, where they're meeting with the gifted teacher at elementary, and that's important to your son or daughter, then you are more than welcome, again, to find out when that pullout period would be from your building principal. And you are more than welcome, if you're able to transport your child to and from that, you're more than welcome to have them come into the building with that. And again, if there's anything beyond that in the GIP, then we would have to have a conversation to see how we could meet those needs. Okay, another question for you. Will the elementary students have different teachers for each subject or one common teacher for one grade? It is one common teacher for one grade through Accelerate Educate. 
And those are the same discussions, which again, I wish I could give you a definitive answer. We're just not at that point yet in the event that it's North Hills teacher. But right now, as it says, if elementary teachers or elementary students are being taught by Accelerate Educate teachers, it is one teacher per grade. Okay, and um, in that, at the elementary level, they focus on the core classes. Are the, t are the parents allowed to reach out to those special teachers and ask for the lessons for the week? Um, that's a great question. That is nothing that we have discussed um, at this point in time. And I don't know how we would do that because those teachers would be teaching all the students face to face. So I'm not sure that that would be feasible or we would be able to do that. Um, so again, I, I don't know that we would be able to accommodate that, but certainly I, I can write that question down as well. Okay, here's another one. Yes, ma'am. Compare the North Hills Online Academy to PA Cyber. Um, I will be very honest with you. I know very, very little about PA Cyber. That's not a program. I'm very, very proud of the North Hills Academy. Um, we used a committee of teachers, administrators, who chose Accelerate Educate because of the coursework, because of the rigor, because of the engagement, because of the, the design of the lessons, how it's aligned to our PA standards, which makes it very easy if someone wants to transition and transition out of it. I think it's a great, great program. Obviously, um, if not, we would not have selected that. So I'm really, really proud of what that looks like. And I think any time that you can have the opportunity to enroll in an online program and still have the option of coming into the school if you choose to exercise that to participate in other classes face-to-face -face, as well as participate into any North Hills activities, I think it's a win-win. We have a phenomenal district with phenomenal teachers, phenomenal parents. Um, it's a great school district. I personally, obviously am a mom. I have two children. If this was something that I would be looking at and I was in a position where my child was enrolled at North Hills School District and I felt as though I had to look at an online program, I can honestly tell you I would be very comfortable putting my child in North Hills online program. I don't okay. know if that's the best answer, but that's the best I can do since I don't know a lot about PA Cyber. Here's another one for you. The elementary, uh, will students be assessed? at the elementary level? There is an assessment within that. There are benchmark assessments within the courses, particularly at primary, because we're very, very concerned to make sure that students are reading and where they're at with math. So there are assessments that are based with regard to that. So yes, there are assessments, benchmark assessments built in that gives us, for lack of a better word, that standardized data so we can really measure the direction of your students' learning. And uh, this one's more for Mrs. Pallet. Where can parents find the video that Dr. Williams and I uh, recorded last week? Um, I think I sent the link directly to that particular person who asked that question, but it, it is on Facebook and it is also on our YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's actually too embedded in the online academy page as well. So multiple places. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any other questions, Mrs. Brooks? Uh, no, you're, no, I'm good. I can answer what's coming up here. Great. Let's bring uh, Laura Finucane up to talk. Are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, Mrs. Finucane. Hi, I'm sorry. I have one more question. Sure. Have you received a lot of online applications? We have received a lot of interest in the online program and yes we are receiving applications on a daily basis with regard to enrollment so again we've received a lot of interest forms saying hey i'm interested i have a lot of questions we've received a ton of those those have since dwindled down since we began doing these videos in the interim the enrollment process just really started to kick off um, and yes we're receiving some enrollment numbers but a lot of people are again saying, look, I'm going to enroll, but it kind of depends on what the district's going to do. So that's kind of where we're at with regard to that. But we are receiving daily enrollments, yes. So would you say it's better, like, to wait to enroll until August 6th? So if I enrolled now, should I get him enrolled? Can I change if I decide August 6th or should I just wait? 
there is no cap. I think some people were very concerned yeah. that there was a cap on how many enrollments that we can accept. There is no cap. It's not going to affect anything. It, whatever grade your child's in, and I don't know if you have a high school student, Ms. Finucane, do you have a high schooler? No, he's going into the second grade. Absolutely, then not a problem. If you wait till August 6th, the courses are gonna be the courses. So it is not a problem if you wait. It is not a penalty or a detriment to you at all to wait. And okay. To enroll at all. It will not change your chances. You won't get capped out or shut out. Absolutely not. Okay, I had a little concern. Okay, then, then I'll just wait. I was just a little concerned about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, next up looks like Sarah. There's no last name. So Sarah. Hi, Sarah, how are you? Hi, Sarah, are you there? Okay, maybe we can come back to her. Let's go to Darlene Waddingham. Darlene. Hi again. Hi there. Um, I was just wondering, is there any guidelines or advice you can give us as parents to help our kids succeed for, at the online schooling or anywhere I could find that information? I think it, we actually do have some things where we have almost like a checklist that says, is, is online learning appropriate for your son and daughter? I think the biggest piece is, is understanding of creating a structure for it. I think while the courses are very structured, your student has to have a structure. They have to have a workspace that they're gonna to go to and this is where I'm gonna sit and this is where I'm gonna work on my online studies. I think making sure that they log in every single day is critical to that process. I think making sure they log into every single class every day, even if it's just to check out. You know, I talked to another parent who was saying, hey look, if they have, they're overloaded in this subject and they have a lot to do, can they kind of focus on this subject and, and look at the other one? I think it's critical that they at least log in every single day to every single subject, particularly at K through eight. I think that's imperative. High school students have a little, typically have a little bit more time management skills and they're able to do that. And I think it is keeping up with that. I think it's easy to say, oh, there's really not that much to do and kind of try and skip through some things. And that's where you can get in trouble very quickly. Mrs. Brooks, I know you have done some online teaching as yes. a middle school teacher. And I know you probably have some suggestions as well that you might want to give. I will say that what is really nice about the Accelerate Educate program is with every course in the very beginning, it goes through a little orientation and it reiterates exactly what Ms. Dr. Williams just said. You know, you want to log in, you want to structure, but it goes through that. Also, what's really nice about the Accelerate Educate program is if you watch the video there's a little calendar feature and it's like a things to do list and that all has to be done that day so that helps keep the child going but the, uh, to go online you have to be a self-starter they they have to they're responsible for their own learning they have to be advocates so that when they don't understand something there's a teacher there for them but if they don't reach out to the teacher the teacher doesn't know that they're having an issue with a certain concept I think the, the other piece that is very important is an Accelerate Educate. I really like the program from a parent perspective because you're able to see what is going on with your student pretty much every single day. You can log in, you can see what they've completed, what they haven't completed. So particularly if it's an elementary student, you're able to have that conversation and you're able to see how much time they spend on the lesson. And to me, as a parent, that would be very, very important because if I saw that my daughter was struggling with the course. If I went through and saw, hey, look, oh my gosh, you were on this lesson for 90 minutes. I need to sit down, let's talk about what's going on. What did you do today that took you 90 minutes? Not in a critical way, but just trying to understand. And then if they say, I was on there for 90 minutes because I was really frustrated, I didn't understand what I was doing. That's a really important feature in a conversation. So parents, there's a lot of behind the scenes information, for lack of a better word, that you will have access to that will help you monitor um, your son or daughter's success and what that looks like on a daily basis. You'll be able to see very, very quickly what that looks like. If they're spending a lot of time on things, 
And is it because they're really, really interested or are they spending time on things because they're distracted or are they spending time on things because this is something they're kind of struggling with and they need some additional help. At the other end of the spectrum is, oh my gosh, you had you know 40 math problems to complete, 30 math problems to complete and you were able to do it in 10 minutes. That's fantastic. Maybe I need to reach out to the teacher because it seems like you've mastered that concept. Maybe we need to talk about getting you some of those challenge assignments as well. If the teacher has not already noticed that themselves, you certainly can advocate. And as Mrs. Brooks is saying, as they get older, we encourage them to self-advocate to what they need. But the biggest piece is that discipline and dedication to sit down every day and attend school. It's the same as school. You're just choosing to Absolutely. take classes at home for lack of a better word. Absolutely, thank you so much. You're welcome, thanks. Okay, I have another transportation question. Yes. If a child starts the online academy and changes their mind, would transportation be available? Transportation back to bus or be parents' responsibility? No, certainly if a, a student starts the, on, the nine weeks in the online academy and at the end of the nine weeks they decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and transition back to what the, the building, what is this gonna look like? Yes, they would, we would be, need to reach out to transportation and provide them with district transportation. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I think I was muted. This is um, Marlene Ozell again. No. Um, so I have a question, um, going back to the video when you were showing the school platform, I have two young elementary age students. Miss mm -hmm. Ozell, I'm so sorry. I am not hearing you. You're cutting it. Sorry. No, that's okay. Now I can hear you perfectly. That's great. Okay. okay. So my question was in the demo for elementary schools, there was something about like worksheets that you can download. Um, um, but when you're talking about work, everything's being submitted through the iPad. Are those supplemental or are we taking pictures of those worksheets? Because mostly because like for their handwriting skills, right? When they're really young, they still have to write um, to learn yeah. those skills. Nope. So how does that work? Sure, great question. Go ahead, Mrs. Brooks. You got that it, one? It all depends. Some of the worksheets that are embedded in the course that you download are just for practice and they do not have to be submitted to the teacher. And the ones that do have to be submitted, there are very detailed directions as to how to submit those worksheets through the Accelerate Educate program. But they may need to print those worksheets, correct, Mrs. Brooks? Yes, they do have to print them. Yeah, so I guess the reason I was asking, because like in the spring, when we had anything that had to be written, I was taking a picture with my phone and then it was going to, sending it to my son's email and then I was downloading and then uploading. So I was wondering if that process was streamlined a little bit better. <laughs> We're definitely trying to streamline that a little bit better. Um, we are looking at what that looks like. But again, I know in the courses, some of the assessments are built in where students are answering right there in the lesson and on the screen. Some are sheets where they will have to download and then you would have to upload. They'd have to print those out. They'd have to answer those questions. And then I don't know whether it would be a scanning or what that would look like. We are getting that information as well. And we are looking to see in the event um, if there's any other alternate ways to do that we definitely want to streamline that for parents and for students to the best of their ability ability that is definitely a question we have in to accelerate educate okay thank you you're welcome i don't think we have any other hands raised at this time so mrs brooks do you have any more that i can answer for you um And no, no, I just have one more to finish and I'm okay. Okay. We do have one more question, Dr. Williams. Cindy McCarthy. Hi, Ms. McCarthy. I, hello. Um, I might be the one question that Mrs. Brooks was going to answer. I, I, I just answered it. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. It didn't come through yet. So yeah. in case it benefits anybody else, I was asking, is there a listing of which teachers in the, at the high school level are teaching the various courses? Mr. McKinnon has, is doing the master schedule, and I know there's some things that are changing and switching, as always happens, regardless of whether we have had online or a pandemic, there's always changes to the master schedule over the summer. That's just the nature of the master schedule. So scheduling won't be available or be able to be released until probably sometime in August. 
your son or daughter, I'm assuming, received a schedule in the spring, probably did not have teacher names attached because all those final decisions haven't been made. But that information will be released soon, just like it is with regular schedules. For the online academy? Yes, those courses okay. will also, you will also see that. Yes, ma'am. You will get a schedule okay. for the online academy with teacher names released. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Mrs. Brooks, any others? Um, given that this is all new, what steps is North Hills taking to ensure that any technical issues are dealt with and do not impair the child's education? For example, what if online academy goes down or offline? Um, that hasn't happened yet, but if it does, that problem is on their end and it usually go there. I've never had a problem with it going down or on. That's a problem with them. On it's their end, not on our end, on their end. And if there's a problem with the iPad, um, they are going to have to contact a teacher, open a ticket, go through the normal process. I will tell you that um, the very first module of every single course of Accelerate Educate, there are directions on how to contact the help desk for Accelerate Educate. So there is, again, every iPad is new. It is a web-based program, so we're very comfortable. Accelerate Educate offers online school systems throughout the United States. It's that highly touted of a program. It is really phenomenal. So I don't necessarily have concerns that their entire platform yeah. is going to go down. However, if there are concerns with regard to that, they will communicate that. And the beauty of this program, which is something we have not had in our previous programs, if there is a pro problem, let's say your son or daughter is in the midst of a lesson, they go to click the video that's embedded in a lesson. And for whatever reason, the video is not playing. As Mrs. Brooks said, literally there is a, in the how-to video where you would submit a ticket and say, hey, I'm, my daughter is in math, second grade math, they're in the second unit and they're doing this lesson, the video is not playing, they will rectify and take care of that. Now, if it's an issue, quote unquote, with the iPad, and it is on the North Hills issued device, then you would need to communicate with your building principal or your school counselor and let us know, and we would take it from that direction. Any other questions that I can answer? There is one more hand, so Sarah. Okay. Hi, Sarah. Sarah, are you there? You're, you're unmuted now on your end too. I don't know why we can't hear you. Hi, Sarah. Okay, well, there is another hand, so let's switch to that hand and we'll give sure. Sarah a minute. Okay, Ebony McQueen Harris. Hi there. Hello, Dr. Williams, how are you this evening? I'm good, thank you, and you? I'm well, thank you. I'm glad to hear you're well. Um, so we are new to the district, and I think, and you know, you may have addressed this already, um, but I'm trying to wrap my head around the virtual learning in the online academy. Is it that virtual academy is offered if the district decides to move in that direction, and the online learning is an option if you want to want to have your child enrolled or not. Correct, that is it. In a nutshell, you should be sitting in my seat, Ms. McQueen-Harris, you did a great job answering that question. That's exactly right. The virtual is if the entire district would go under that operational plan. That would be the entire district is being shut down because Governor Wolf says, hey, guess what, you're in red, this is what's gonna happen, or the CDC says this is when you're in red. Whereas the online academy program is something that you can choose to enroll your son or daughter in at any time, regardless of the district's operational plan. Okay, I thank you so much. And thank I thank you. you all for having this this evening. It's very helpful to me and my family. Oh, thank you. We're glad you're part of the district. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, I have another question. Okay. If enough elementary students in a grade school choose online academy, but they all have their own in-person class in the building, in the school building for specials. Wait, ask me that again. If enough elementary students opt in in a grade level. Grade, mm -hmm. would they all have the same, wait, 
would they all have their own in-person class in the school building for specials? So say that whole second grade class oh, wants to go, will they Elementary. all be in the same art class, in the same music class, in the same gym class? Well, at this point in time at the elementaries, we do not have, we're focusing on the core courses. So the specialist classes, if you opt into the online academy, the only way your child would have the specialist classes would be to come into school for that specialist class. The building principal would let you know when that specialist class would be meeting and they would come in. And that is not going to be, okay, I'm bringing my second grader into art and anybody who is an online academy, the only, all the online academy kids are all going to be in art together. That's not how we do class lists. Um, and we wouldn't do the class list in this, in this case as well. Um, they would be mixed in with other students as dependent upon the building schedule. I hope I answered that. Yeah. And we have a question about the materials needed for the online academy. Are we going to post those lists somewhere of what they would need? Um, everything is embedded within the course of what you're going to need. And I think, Mrs. Brooks, that might be referencing our video beforehand where it talked about at the beginning of every course, it kind of talks about here's the supply list. And the other reason we really like Accelerate Educate is because the supplies that you need are things that you have at home. So yeah. let's say you're doing an elementary math lesson and it is a primary math lesson. Your aides kindergarten first or second. They might ask you to find 50 manipulatives to use for counting, to teach children how to count by fives or count by tens. That could be 50 pennies, that could be 50 buttons, that could be 50 paper clips, 50 crayons, 50 pencils, whatever it would be. So typically any of the supplies that they would require from you should be something that you would have at home. And I know we don't know how to answer this question. The school libraries, will mm -hmm. kids have access to the school libraries? I, I think that's a conversation that we are continuing to wait because again, um, as we look at the guidelines from the CDC and we look at safely maintaining social distancing with regard to students and what that looks like taking classes and things down there, those are all things that we are looking internally at to look at the different procedures and protocols that we need to look at to make sure that students certainly have access to things, but we also need to maintain the safety, health, and well-being of everyone. So that information and all those different types of questions, all of those things are things that we are still working on behind the scenes with regard to that. Okay, I have one more question. And um, I know I look at it from a different lens being a secondary teacher and it deals with conferences. And I know on the hilltop, regardless of whether a student is in the online academy or whether it's face-to-face, -face, we do meet with parents, but it is on an as-needed basis. If the student is at risk, we have conferences. Mm -hmm. So I think they do things a little bit differently at the elementary level with conferences. And I'm assuming that those conferences would also be extended to include the online students also, correct? Absolutely, depending upon who would be teaching the class, whether you'd be meeting with an Accelerate Educate teacher, quote unquote, virtually, or things such as such, or whether it'd be a North Hills teacher facilitating that class. Certainly, if we would need to schedule a conference that we would go ahead and facilitate that need, absolutely. We want parents to join in this partnership with us as we work together to provide the best educational opportunities for your son or daughter, absolutely. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much for attending this evening. Um, as I said before, all of this information has been uploaded. Every single time we do one of these, this session has been recorded. Please feel free to watch it again. There is a lot of information, a lot of updates that have gone on that webpage. We will continue to be transparent with the FAQs and questions as such. Please make sure, again, if you are interested in enrolling your son and daughter, you need to fill out the North Hills online enrollment form. It's a Google form. So you can enroll and you will receive confirmation after you have enrolled your son and daughter. And again, while we would like them to be enrolled as quickly as possible, we certainly understand and appreciate the fluidity of this decision and that you wanna take your time to make sure you're right, making the right decision for your child. So we certainly hope that we've provided some answers to some of your questions. 
as more information becomes available and we start to come with some more definitive answers, we will certainly, Mrs. Brooks and I, either do another presentation or another meeting to make sure that we are accessible so you can continue to ask us questions. But thank you so much for your patience as we work through the challenges of doing this. And I cannot reiterate enough, we are, as a district, deeply committed to doing the very best for your students, educationally maintaining the safe, healthy, and well-being to the best of our abilities. And we hope to see you soon. Thanks very much. Have a great evening.